Hello, I'm Frank Yotso. Today at Crawford School, we're joined by Professor Jiang Kejun, one of China's leading researchers on climate change, uh, energy policy, and the modeling of emission scenarios. Jiang, well, Jiang welcome. Um, can you tell us about China's energy and emissions trajectories? Uh, we've seen the data years and years of very, very fast economic growth, fast growth of energy use and emissions. Can China turn the trajectory around? Yes, it's a really surprise to see what happened in China for the last several decades. And the use keep increasing with an amazing speed. So now the question comes to us, one, we can pick our shoe two, or even some people talk about one, we can pick our energy use. Uh, so based on our study, originally we say China can pick a CO2 emission before 2030. But now actually we want to say China, if we do a good job, we can anyway pick our CO2 emission before 2025. This is also now they are month story to push for that. What is required for emissions to uh, stop growing and then to decline in China uh, within the next 10 or 12 years? Yes, uh, th there are several key factors. The first one is we have to think about what's the future economy in China. Well, the, I think that the major driving force for the last uh, around two decades for energy to increase is the increase of energy intensive industry in China. But if you look at China nowadays, we have a lot of our new building, railway, road, everything. So almost go to the peak for a new contract building uh, for the total space and the total length of railway and uh, road. We cannot go much more than that. So that means uh, the peak year for any intensive industry is coming very soon. And uh, the, the energy intensive industry actually consumed nearly 70% of a new increase of energy during the, last, during the last 10 years. So if this sector, all those sectors stop to increase, what happened for energy? So the, big, the first factor is to, to, to control the increase of energy intensive sectors. We need some good policy. The second point is the renewable energy. If you like, look at what happened in China, it's also amazing, not only amazing for other countries, people from other countries, but even for ourselves. For example, in January, uh, the new uh, 12 five year plan for energy development just came through. And uh, its plan by 2015, the total installed, uh, total installed capacity for solar PV will be something like 20 gigawatt. But by the end of uh, February, uh, it seems the plan is going to 35 gigawatt by 2015. So if you look at the data for, for wind, and also for hydro, it's going very well in, in near future. So it's for, we can do a very good job for this. This can contribute a lot to stop the increase of CO2 emission in, in future. The, the number three, the key factor is, of course, we continue to do energy efficiency. It's already happened a lot, energy efficiency. So we, we will do this. The last one, is maybe we'll think about, think about some new technology such as CSS. Now you lead this research at the Energy Research Institute in Beijing and you will be telling us in a lecture tonight more about the detail of the yeah. uh, trajectories that, uh, that your institute has uh, developed. Um, but can you tell us uh, something about the policy instruments that are being deployed in China and the ones that may be used in the future? Yes, uh, if we come back to the issue of energy and CO2 emission, we strongly push a lot of new policy to come out. For example, whether China can take some cap on energy. The good news is that the new 12 five year plan on energy actually they set the cap for 2015 to be 4 billion ton co-equivalent for the total energy use by that time. So I think this policy can continue to go to 2020, that means for 13 five year plan. And also for CO2 emission, can also go to the cap, uh, the policy like that, together with the new renewable energy policy, what do we want to change our economic structure. I think if everything is Good. I have very strong confidence China can peak CO2 emission before 2025. And do you have confidence that China may be able to lead the world or at least lead the developing and industrializing part of the world in uh, low carbon strategies? I hope China can lead the world. Together with our uh, colleagues, for example, we can work together with Australia, with the EU, with Japan, United States, several leading countries. We can work together to make a low carbon happen, not only 
in, in this several countries, but also in other world, like other developing countries. They can share information, they can share technology. We can make our own effort. There's also a recent topic we are talking about that is uh, whether we can make a smaller group to, to make uh, the climate change or mitigation to two degree happen. It's really in our hand to make that. Thank you, Chang Ketun, and uh, thank you very much for sharing your insights here at Crawford School. You're welcome.